Welcome. This video will be discussing the zinc transport system ZNTB. Scientists still know very little about this transport system, but they do know that it is important to cell integrity in fighting harmful pathogens. So let's begin with learning a little bit of background information. ZNTB is a prokaryotic zinc transporter protein that spans the intracellular, transmembrane, and extracellular regions. There is controversy as to whether ZNTB is an efflux or an influx transporter. As an efflux transporter, it would export divalent zinc out of the cell. As an influx protein, it would import divalent zinc into the cell. Regardless, the role of the protein is essentially the same, tra transporting zinc in and out of the cell. Zinc is necessary to maintain proper integrity of the cellular system. Depletion or excess concentrations of zinc can cause disruption to biological processes. Divalent zinc has been shown to be critical in managing the interactions between hosts and unwanted pathogens. The upscale or downscale of zinc concentrations in the intracellular region allows the cell to suppress unwanted pathogens. Evidence has shown that in the presence of pathogens, divalent zinc is transported from the intracellular space to the extracellular space by ZNTB. The export of zinc from the cell by ZNTB then suppresses the pathogen viability and cellular homeostasis can be restored. Up until recently, ZNTB was believed to be a, a core A protein. Further study has contradicted that claim as core A proteins are multi-metal transporters and ZNTB is zinc specific. Now, ZNTB is classified as a distant member of the core A protein family. The structure of the two proteins are very similar as shown here. They both resemble a star-shaped pore. Additionally, ZNTB and core A are sequence homologs. These striking similar similarities are why scientists believe the two proteins also had similar functionality. However, as mentioned before, ZNTB only transports divalent zinc, whereas core A can transport magnesium, cobalt, zinc, and copper. Core A proteins also have identified metal binding sites whereas ZNTB does not, in indicating a different transport mechanism. On this core A protein, you, you see the magnesium is bound in a number of locations. For tra transport in or out of the cell, however, magnesium does need to be bound in the pore. Much of the research being done to better understand ZNTB is working to determine how ZNTB transport zinc across the membrane. Currently, researchers believe that Z zinc does not actually bind to ZNTB. Rather, it gets transported through the pore fully hydrated. Now, zinc is an interesting metal. It is a first row transition metal, has a full set of D orbitals, and is redox inactive. According to hard soft acid base theory, zinc is a borderline soft metal. This means that it prefers to bind to soft donor ligands such as cysteine and methionine, but it, but it also has the capability to bind to hard donor ligands such as water. In biological systems, water is by far the most prominent sol solvent and is therefore the driving force to make it possible for hydrated zinc ions to exist and be relatively stable. Zinc can also exist in a few different ge geometries while hydrated. The most commonly observed geometries are tetrahedral and octahedral. Although we don't know the exact coordination geometry of zinc in the ZNTB system, one can speculate that zinc could be transported in either the octahedral or tetrahedral binding geometries. To determine whether hydrated zinc is transported in the octahedral or tetrahedral geometry, we can use software to do some very basic computational work. Using a software called Chimera, we can create hydrated divalent zinc molecules that could resemble those found in your body. Here you see both the octahedral and tetrahedral geometries being fit within the pore. 
based on the relative sizes of both the tetrahedral and octahedral hydrated zinc molecules and the protein poor, either could be possible, but tetrahedral seems to have a slightly better fit. Due to sterics alone, the tetrahedral geometry is the more stable configuration of the two. There is less crowding of the water molecules, decreasing the repulsion energy between them, making the overall molecule more stable. Therefore, it is more likely that ZNTB transports the hydrated zinc molecule in the tetrahedral geometry. However, regardless of the binding geometry, it is important that the hydrated zinc molecule is stable in biological conditions. Based on thermodynamics, we can confidently say that the hydrated zinc molecule is stable and able to exist in biological systems for transport. The enthalpy of hydration is always negative and it increases as one moves across the periodic table. This is because as you move across the periodic table, the Z effective increases, causing a stronger attraction between the metal and the water molecule. Additionally, as you increase the number of D electrons, the stability increases as the energy value becomes more negative. There are only a few exceptions to this rule. Together, these factors promote a reaction that is exothermic and therefore favorable. Zinc has a relatively high Z effective and an enthalpy of hydration that is relatively favorable as it is a D10 metal. Further, based on Taub's rule in kinetics, zinc should be a very labile ion. Zinc has a full D orbital with an LSFP value of zero. Water is a borderline, borderline pi donor slash acceptor ligand. Pi donors tend to increase lability because they decrease delta T, which decreases the LFSC values. However, since zinc already has a full D orbital, the water mo molecules cannot donate to the antibonding D orbitals, and therefore the ligand effects on lability are minimal in, in this case. For hydrated zinc in the ZNTB system, the molecule must be stable enough for transport, but also labile once transported in or out of the cell so it can perform the specific cellular function required at that time. To accommodate the transport of hydrated zinc across the membrane, evidence suggests that ZNTB has to undergo a conformational change. The ribbon structures are a good way to illustrate this. Here you can see the full length ZNTB protein, including the transmembrane region. Next, you see the cytoplasmic domain of ZNTB embedded with 25 chlorine atoms. Note that in each structure, there is a star-shaped pore. Also note that the pore is larger in the second cytoplasmic domain structure. The binding of the chlorine atoms to the specific amino acids in the pore is thought to cause a slight widening of the protein pore as well as a change in the pore potential. Here you can see the shift in the pore shape pre and post chlorine binding. Additionally, rather than zinc being transported by itself, the transport of zinc is thought to be accompanied with a proton transfer as there is an observed lowering in pH during transport. This change in pH indicates that the zinc transport mechanism by ZNTB is a coupled zinc hydrogen plus atom transfer mechanism. The coupling mechanism also supports the theory of zinc being transported as hydrated as the pore would act more as an ion channel. With our current understanding of the ZNTB system, we can come to a couple of conclusions. First, the transport of zinc by ZNTB requires a conformational change of the protein pore. Second, the metal ion is transported fully hydrated rather than being bound to the protein, which could allow for the zinc molecules to be readily accessible to perform various cellular functions once imported into the cell. Third, the ZNTB protein is an important efflux or influx prokaryotic protein that helps combat unwanted pathogens.